Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and unless you have been living under the rock called Photoshop CS6, you cannot not know about neural filters. It's the snapshot of Photoshop, only slower. In previous videos, we have talked about neural filters, we have joked about it, made fun about it. However, there's a filter inside neural filters that can be legitimately useful. Yes, we are talking about the ever so popular Instagram deception creating filter called skin softening. In this video, we'll understand how it works how good or bad it is, and thirdly and finally, we will compare it with a skin softening action that I made two years ago. You already know where this video is going, however, stay tuned till the end for a plot twist. I'm super excited to share these with you, so without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you my friends already know what to do, check the links in the description. So as you can see, she has a lot of acne. We need to take that away, we need to soften the skin. But before applying any kind of skin softening or even if you're doing high-end dodging and burning, I recommend removing the blemishes first. So let's go ahead and create a brand new layer. And with the help of your favorite healing tool, it can be the spot healing tool or the regular healing brush tool, just start removing these blemishes. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click to take a sample. Make sure the sample is current and below and paint over the blemish, it's gone it's gonna be replaced by the area that you sampled. Now, sometimes we can have trouble locating where the blemish is. For that, there's a check layer, and that is create a black and white adjustment layer and simply take down the reds. Have a look at it. Every blemish is so clearly visible. Just don't show to the model. You'll be in trouble. Now, let's come down to the blemish layer. Don't forget to name it and zoom in. Again, make sure the sample is current and below. Don't choose all layers. If you do, it'll also sample the black and white. Anyway current and below, take a sample of a clean area and paint over the blemish. Take a sample of a clean area near the blemish and paint over the blemish. I'm gonna make the process a little faster for you. Now we are not removing these because these are all the reds, okay? If you want, you can, of course. Now on top of this, you can of course turn off the black and white adjustment layer or the check layer or completely take it away once you're done with it. And then you can remove something that you see as extra, like dots and spots and anything that takes the attention away from the subject, all right? Now, once we are done with the blemish removal, let's get into the meat, or if you're vegetarian, tofu of this tutorial, and that is skin softening. For that, if you want to use the neural filters, we need to create a stamp visible layer. For that, press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, Command, Option, Shift, and E. It creates a stamp visible layer at the top. And then do not forget to convert this into a smart object by right clicking on it and then choosing convert to smart object. That way you can change the values of neural filter or any filter later that supports smart objects. Go to filter and then neural filters. At the top we have skin smoothing. Let's turn it on. As you can see, Photoshop has detected the face with this blue box. Now these two sliders are very essential to understand how this filter works. First of all, let's zoom in. The first slider that says blur actually controls how blurred or how sharp the texture of the skin is. It's like frequency separation. The first one controls the texture and the second one is the color and the tone. So if you have less blur, you will notice the skin texture is more sharp. If I zoom in, you'll be able to see it more clearly, all right? Blur at zero, the skin texture is very sharp. Blur at 100, the skin texture goes smooth. So we do want a sharper skin texture, but we wanna even out the reds. So let's zoom out. This looks very soft, looks like wax. We don't want that to happen. Smoothness is the slider that controls the smoothness of the tones in the skin. When the smoothness is low, as you can notice, all of these patches show up. If we increase the smoothness, notice that all of these just softens up. Again, it doesn't disturb the skin texture. That's what I really like about this. Once you're happy with this, just hit OK. Now let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before and this is the after. I gotta say, it's a major improvement. Now if you don't want this effect in all of the areas, you can create a mask right here or already smart objects come with a mask when you add smart filters. So you can choose this mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, white as the foreground color, take a soft round brush and start painting on the areas where you want to apply this effect, all right? And that works pretty fine for us. For simplicity and comparison, I'm gonna take the mask away and keep it the way it was. Let's go back. Let's do a recap and make sure we understood everything. There are two sliders inside of skin softening in neural filters. The first one is blur, which controls how blurred or sharp the skin texture is. The second one is smoothness, which controls how 
even or smooth, we're going to make the skin tones underneath the texture without disturbing the texture. Make sense? Let's move on. And this time, let's try our Pix Imperfect skin softening action. And by the way, you can download it using the link in the description. Let's turn off neural filters and let's go to window and then actions. Now I've already imported the action and it is Pix Skin Softening. Let's select the action and simply play it. First, it's going to open up the Surface Blur dialog box where you can control how much evenness or smoothness do you want in the skin tones. The more blur you'll have, the more smoothness there would be. So for this example, I'm going to go with probably 55. So it'll all soften up. Now do keep in mind this sure is a time taking filter. Hit OK. Now it comes to texture. The high pass dialog box will show up where you can control how much texture you want back after softening everything up. So in this case, I feel probably at about 8.5 looks all right. So let's choose 8.5 and you can keep the blending settings at that. It makes sure that we don't over soften the dark areas or the highlight areas. Hit OK. These settings are fine. And now it automatically picks the brush for you white as the foreground color. And all you got to do now is just paint over the areas that you want to fix. Now with this action, you can always change the numbers later. If you feel it's too soft, you can go back and just reduce the softness. So I'm just going to do a small area here. And now let's compare it with neural filters. So this is neural filters and this is Pix Imperfect Skin Softening Action. And I got to say, I got to give that to Adobe. Adobe did a much more natural job of skin softening. Didn't see that coming, did you? If you look at it closely, look at Adobe's result. It's more natural. Yes, there are some unevenness in the skin, but that doesn't make it look bad. It creates a natural result that too without needing a mask. If we want it, we can of course go to the mask here and only apply it in areas where we want it. But still, out of the box, I gotta say, it's much better than the action that I created. But I created it two, three years ago. There was no neural filters back then. Anyway, so this is neural filters. This is the result of my action. But wait, there are certain things though that this action can do which neural filters cannot. Let's discuss that. Now, let's say you wanted to remove the wrinkles from his clothes. You cannot apply skin softening here because it's not a skin. However, you can absolutely apply big skin softening. Even though it's made for skin, it can be applied anywhere. So now you have to choose a setting where all of the wrinkles just go away. I feel this is a good number. Hit OK. Now we have to choose how much texture we want here. Let's zoom in. And about four pixels is fine. Hit OK. It automatically selects the brush for you. And all you got to do is just paint on the areas where you want to remove the wrinkles. Have a look. Look at the magic. It's just we are ironing with Photoshop. Just look at it. You cannot do that with neural filters because it just won't detect it. Want to try? All right, let's turn this off. Make a copy of the background layer. Let's go to filter and then neural filters. It just won't even detect it for skin softening. See, it's just grayed out. Let me share with you one more example. Even though we want to soften the skin, in some cases, Photoshop cannot do it with the skin softening and neural filters. Let's open our third example. Now, in this case, if you go to filter and then neural filters and try to soften the skin, it definitely will soften the skin of the face. Let's turn on skin smoothing and we can decrease the blur, increase the smoothing. However, it only softens the skin or does skin smoothing on the face. How about the rest of the body? Photoshop just doesn't detect or even consider that. So again, those are a couple limitations. But with the big skin softening action, you can of course work on the rest of the body. Now I'm not going to make any changes to the settings. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Just keep on hitting OK. Maybe we would increase the amount of texture we want. Now, have a look. Let's not focus on the face. Even if you're working on the shoulders and start painting there, it softens that area. To wrap things up, if you're doing quick edits, the neural filter skin smoothing is definitely worth considering. However, keep in mind, it is not and can never be a replacement for frequency separation or high-end dodging and burning, at least of course, as of recording this video. Maybe five years from now, a lot of retouchers might not lose their job, but their job will be much easier. I always try to look at the bright side. Now, of course, this filter has its own limitations. For example, it only works on faces and it cannot go beyond a particular value. Let's say plus 50 is the maximum value. We cannot go beyond that if you wanted to soften the tones up a little more. 
But still, it's definitely worth considering. I'm very sure you'll find a way to include it in your workflow, but only include it if you're doing quick edits. That's just my opinion. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. <laughs>